What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dead Build, a place where we practice social distancing by having our whiskey delivered. So about a year and a half ago, I made a video on how to get a Shishugi Bond finish. <coughs> Coronavirus! So I wanted to bring that video up to date, share some new tips and tricks that I, uh, I learned along the way, and answer some pretty common questions that I get on that video. You guys ever wonder why I walk off camera that way when the shop is behind me? Hmm. Hmm. It's where the whiskey is. It's not where the whiskey is. Whiskey's in there. All right, so there's always some argument on whether this is a burnt wood finish or a shishugi bond finish. I am going to call it shishugi bond. I understand that some purists out there are gonna argue that it has to be a specific kind of tree and treatment. I would argue that shishugi bond in the woodworking community has become the treatment I'm about to show you. For today's demonstration, I am going to be performing this treatment on pine this regular old pine you can get at the big box store i had a one by four laying around so i cut it into a bunch of blocks we are going to cook these up <laughs> and then we're going to get to work but let me show you something first very important when you're picking your wood you want to make sure that you pick interesting grain patterns okay so see we've got a couple of knots on here this is the one time when you're picking wood that you want to get the knots in there because knots make for really interesting burn patterns uh, we've got some wide grain we've got some thin grain here the last thing you want to do is wind up with a board like this see how that's just it's just straight grain the entire way there's really no variation and basically what this is going to do is when i burn this it's just going to look like it has ridges like ruffles or <laughs> you know what i'm talking about and even though nobody likes to talk about it, I would be remiss if I did not talk about safety gear. So, so you want to have some sort of gloves to protect your handsies from the hotsies, from the flames and whatnot. Try to get gloves that do not have any sort of nylon in them. Uh, when nylon burns, it acts like plastic because it is plastic and it will adhere to your skin and it hurts these. You want some sort of safety goggles for your eyesies. You want a mask for your lungsies. Uh, you're, especially when we're doing the brush, you're going to put a lot of char in there. So you want to make sure you're wearing this so you don't, uh, so you don't uh, sound like a pack a day smoker later. I have a fire, fire extinguisher on hand. Luckily, I've never had to use that. I have a small spray bottle full of, uh, that's 99% that's alcohol. Just kidding, that is water. Uh, I will use that to spray on the boards while I'm burning them. It helps prevent warp and it also helps anything from catching on fire. Uh, and then I have a nice big bucket here full of dirty water. And uh, this is, uh, I call it a dump bucket, especially when I'm working with small pieces. If something does catch on fire, I can throw it in there. I have a bigger combustible situation. I can always uh, take this and dump it on there. Always make sure that you get the size that you could actually put an infant into. And today, to do the burn, I'm going to be using my big torch. I will link to a torch like this one in the description. I can't find this one anymore, but the one I'm going to link to is the one that I wish I had. If you do not have a big torch, a small propane torch like this can work on smaller pieces. I mean, technically it can work on bigger pieces too, but you're going to be there for a while. I found that you get a more consistent even char with the big torch. That will come into play when we are brushing, which will be the next step. And if you guys know me, you know why I have this torch. If you don't, stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you. I made the original video, I was still removing char with this bad boy, a wire brush, and this bad boy, which is basically a toilet brush or a bathroom brush. Most of the time you don't want to see the tool marks, so you want to stick with nylon. But we've got upgrades. Since that time, I found these Nylox brushes that fit in your hand drill. These will save you so much time. I will link to these down below as well because these right here are what dreams are made of. In the last video, I was using colored stain. Since then, I've discovered wood dyes and unless you're going for a natural look, in my opinion, dye is the only way to go with this technique. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna run you through the technique. We're actually gonna burn the boards. I'm going to brush the boards. And then I'm gonna finish them with a couple different dyes and stains, and I'll let you be the judge of which one you like the best. Sound good? 
But before I start, I want to answer a couple of questions. One, I do not sand my wood before I burn it. The only time I would sand my wood ahead of time is if I had uh, joined a couple of boards together and I had a little discrepancy and I just wanted to make sure it was flat going into the burn. Two, dyeing the piece before you burn it does not work. If the dye does not penetrate deep enough or I have not been able to achieve a deep enough penetration to where when I burn it and take the char off, I don't take all the dye off with it. Three, staining, kind of the same thing. Staining it before doesn't really work either. I have had some decent results. If you wanna get like a weathered look, staining it first and then hitting them with the torch and having it kind of peel back in places. Four, after removing the char, I don't do traditional sanding. I find that the nylon brushes actually smooth the wood out pretty well. Occasionally I'll go in and hit a spot or two with, uh, with the orbit sander or uh, by hand, but mainly the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to get a contrast between the darks and the lights. And five, don't be afraid to go back and burn the material again. I constantly get frustrated messages from people saying they can't produce the same results as I do. I promise you there's no trickery here. Typically what I have found is the people that are not getting the results they're looking for are not burning the wood aggressively enough. Don't be afraid to light it up. All right, guys, all that being said, it has been a while since I've set something on fire. I've been cooped up in this house and I am ready to burn, baby. Let's, let's burn it. Let's burn it all. <laughs> all right, so if you don't have this kind of gator surface on your boards after you burn them, you did not burn deep enough. Like actually this one probably could use a little bit more burn. We should be all right for this tutorial but normally I would probably hit that again with the torch. Next morning. All right, in this time of social distancing, you still have to listen to my neighbors play their stereo outside because they is distancing different than we is distancing. Okay, next we're gonna talk like top coat. First, I'm gonna give you a shot of what these look like without any top coat on them because some people may like the way that looks a little different and it is gonna change once we put the top coat on. The one difference to note is the simple finish. That's what the simple finish looks like. I am not gonna put a top coat on this. I'm gonna let the oil do its thing. Uh, the way you apply simple finish is you apply one coat of oil, you let it sit for about 15 minutes soak in, you apply another coat of oil, let that sit for about 10 minutes and you just wipe it off and you're good to go. So that piece right there is finished. That's gonna give you the most natural look out of all of these. I've gotten a question from a lot of you guys that if you are using a colored wood dye, when you're applying a top coat like a urethane or I'm gonna use Halcyon from Total Boat. Uh, when you're applying that, you'll notice that some of the dye is coming up into the brush. Normally I don't care because I'm doing one color over the whole piece, so if a little bit of it comes up into the brush, no big deal. But somebody was asking me the other day if they were finishing a piece that had multiple colors on it, what I would do. So what you're gonna see me do is a little trick here where I'm gonna put the first layer of the Halcyon finish on with just a paper towel, just to give a, like a light coat to the top of that. 
and then that way subsequent layers of finish you can come back and you can just paint it on with a brush and you're not going to pull up any of that dye. If you guys have been around for a bit you know that I love this stuff. It's a Halcyon Clear Varnish by Total Boat. This is almost going to sound like an ad because I love this so much. Uh, it's damn near bulletproof, it dries in an hour, and it's UV resistant. Do I need to say it anymore? The stuff is fantastic. You'll see what kind of finish this is going to put on there, but uh, this stuff is definitely something to look into. I will, uh, I'll link it below as well, but that is what I'm going to use to finish these pieces. Would you believe that I forgot to film the second application of top coat. What? I never forget to film anything. But guys, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just put it on with a brush. All right, let's look at some results. So first we have the simple finish. You guys have already seen this one. The simple finish is gonna be the most natural looking of them. Okay, where do we start? I'm gonna go best to worst, worst to best. They're all actually pretty good. So this is what I'll do. I'll start with these two. And this is why I said I was going to do them both and let you guys decide. This piece is dyed wood, and this piece is stained wood. So this is the Folk Art Ultra Dye, and this is the Unicorn Spit Stain. I'm to lean towards the dye for this reason. The dye allows these darks to stay dark, where the stain washes them out a little bit. But Come on, both of those look fantastic. So the wood dye, to me, seems a little richer looking than the stain, but I think it's kind of personal preference, and it's what you're going for. If you want a lot of contrast, I'd probably go with the dye, but if you want a little bit less contrast, the stain works pretty well as well. So the next is the blue stain. I'll get it under the ugly lights for you. It's definitely kind of like a really dark navy, maybe even like a midnight blue. Uh, it, it looks pretty good. Next up is the dyed blue, which is, this stuff comes out as purple, man. But that looks amazing. That purple is fantastic. That is a purple that I tried to mix before. Uh, I can never get that color right. And then that just came straight out of a bottle with full card. In person, it's almost electric. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's deep, but electric. The last two are dye as well. This, I've been trying to get this, this to work right for a while. So, I, uh, this is the green, and every time I've used this, it comes out kind of a yellow color. So what I did is I really let the dye sit on the wood, and I finally got more of a green result. I really like the way that one turned out. And last, but not least at all, because to tell you the truth, I am just not a big fan of the color yellow, but, Look at how badass that looks. You could attribute that to the fact that yellow is the closest thing you have to like an actual wood color. Uh, so it really kind of brings that out and just kind of makes it almost a, almost an unreal reel. Can I say that? <laughs> but you guys let me know in the comments down below, which one's your favorite? Do you like something that looks a little bit more like a real wood finish? Out of the reds, do you like the stain or the dye better? Who doesn't love that purple, baby? To the blue? Do you like the yellow? <clears throat> or do you dig the green? Let me know in the comments. And recently, I used these dyes on some bottle openers I made, some magnetic bottle openers. I'll link that video right up here. Uh, I actually ended up giving those away. Congratulations to the winners. I love all those results. I love working with wood dyes. Tell me uh, if there's any products out there that you guys use that I may have not used in the past. I've tried RIT dye, I don't like it. I have gotten food coloring quite a bit. I don't know if I'll ever use that. Um, but other than that, hey, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to, and uh, oh yes, I almost forgot. There's nothing like a nice piece of hickory. I'd like to take this time to say thank you to all my Patreons out there. Without you guys, uh, this stuff wouldn't really happen. So, uh, so thank you so much. I'd like to say welcome to our newest Patreon, Dark Hollow. And as always, Steven Man. Since last time I have modified how I do this a little bit, um, I got rid of the jar that you put it in and just went straight to the glass.
and give that bad boy a couple minutes. One last thing I want to address, people have asked me in the past how I deal with cupping of the boards and whatnot. Now, to a certain degree, this technique is going to lend itself to like a more rustic look, right? It, your boards are always gonna have a little bit of variation in them, but to reduce cupping and warping, a lot of times if you spray the board as you burn it, that will reduce it some. If you do notice uh, like quite a bit of cupping or warping after the fact, a lot of times if you burn the back side of the board, it'll, it'll cause it to settle down a little bit. One thing I've also discovered, you heat that back side and then you put some weight on it, it like a lot of times you can flatten it out that way as well. So that's just another little tip for you guys that decided to stick around. Thank you. Uh, if you want some more tips like that, come check us out on Discord. We, uh, we discuss the ins and outs of, uh, of making all the things there. I'll, uh, I'll leave a link. Bird in here. Uh, I'll leave a link in the, uh, in the description down below. Let's see how we're doing here. <laughs> Alright guys, until next time, thanks for playing, and now I gotta get to work on this whiskey. Mmm, that's delicious. That bird is killing me, dude.